Okay, time to buckle up, Buttercup. Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning with me, your host, Tom Rigsby, the unashamed nonconformist. I'm uh, I'm kind of dragging my feet here for a minute to see who's going to beat Joe to the punch. Oh, man. All right, so Sarah says she beat Joe. <laughs> Joe's Joe's thumbs up showed up before your Sarah before your uh, your greeting. We're going to give it. Well, okay, I'll let y'all arm wrestle about it and see who wins. Anyway, Good morning and welcome to the show. If you are listening on your favorite podcast catcher, you can come over and join the uh, conversation and uh, arm wrestling contest at 7minutesinthemorning.com. I'll get you to the right Facebook page where you can watch and participate in the show. Um, and if you are watching on Facebook and you need to get it somewhere else sometimes, like iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, uh, uh, YouTube, any of those places, it's all out there too. Just look for seven minutes in the morning. All right. So I'm ready to get at it today. Um, because all this week we've been talking about, um, you know, focus and competition and how you measure yourself today. I want to talk about a title today shows, uh, satisfying a craving. I want to start with a story when we were. I'm going to tell a story on, uh, on my bride who, if she's not listening here, can, is because she can just hear me down the hall. When our kids were small, um, <laughs> when our, when our kids were small, she had this concern that they were not, um, not eating right. I'm, I know I'm going to butcher this story and I know I'll hear the right story here in just a minute, but, so she talked to the doctor. Anyway, this is the point I wanted to get to. She talked to the doctor and said, Hey, you know, I'm, you know, are, are they eating enough vegetables? Are they eating the right stuff? And he said, so one of the greatest pieces of advice, uh, in childhood nutrition that I've ever heard is, uh, their body will crave what it needs. And that's true for us too. I mean, as grown ups, you know, when you, you're, working out or something, you get thirsty, your body craves water, it craves those, the electrolyte replacement. Our body craves what it needs. That's why we need to eat it or drink it or whatever the case may be. So if it's okay, in fact, beyond okay, it's kind of necessary for us to listen to and be responsive to the cravings that our body has around food, nutrition, and hydration. Why would it be any different when it comes to what we crave in our life? Now, that's not a word that you, you, you think of a lot, but I want you to just back up from this for a second and think. In fact, kind of the theme I've been working on this year, you know, stop letting life happen to you and create the life you crave. What is it that we crave? What is that unmet unsatisfied longing or desire that we have that you have that's the craving that's that's the craving that is calling to you to satisfy it and yet most of the time we override said craving for the more reasonable response i might have a craving to go oh wingsuit flying have you ever seen these guys like there's some place in Switzerland where they go jump off the side of the mountain in the wingsuit. I don't I personally don't have a craving for that, but you might. Joe probably does. <clears throat> so if that's your craving, why aren't we responsive to that? Well, because it doesn't fit into the standard expected pattern. There is an expected pattern, the way that we are supposed to um, educate, equip, employ, and then retire ourselves. And if you don't follow that pattern, people look at you like you're funny. What, what do you do? What? So is that a real job? 
you know, questions like that. But it's okay. My point that I want to make this morning is that it is totally okay. In fact, necessary. The same way it's necessary to respond to our physical cravings for food and sleep and nutrition, uh, uh, hydration, we need to identify and be responsive to the same cravings that we have for our life. They're there for a reason. Remember, we are each uniquely gifted, talented, and placed for a reason, right? If we're not satisfying that reason, we're going to have a craving, an unmet need, this desire that's dragging us toward, (laughs) sometimes painfully dragging us toward that reason that we're here. You've been given these gifts and talents. Get over here and use them. I mean, that's kind of the, you know, what they're saying. And so if we're not responsive to that, we're just going to have, continue to have this like headbutting thing going on where we feel like we're just banging our head into the wall and nothing is happening. No matter how hard I work, no matter how many hours I put in, no man, no matter how many, you know, great clients I land, you just not making the progress that you want to make. Maybe it's because you're making progress in the wrong direction. You ever thought about that? So your question today, I want you to take away from our conversation today and think about what is the craving that you feel and you're not being responsive to. It's okay to to, to acknowledge it because that's the first step in pursuing it. And it's even more important that you then turn around and pursue it. In addition to all the arm wrestling that's going on in the comments, <laughs> there are other greetings there. So definitely a good morning to uh, Joe and Sarah and Jeff. I'm glad all you guys are there. Those of you that are lurking out there that haven't said hi yet, shame on you. You should do that. At least throw a thumbs up on the video. That will show me that you are out there as well. Uh Yeah, so Sarah said, so Sarah's got some good stuff in there this morning. First of all, I agree with the retire statement because retire means to put away something that's old. I'm retiring this old suit, right? I'm putting away something that's old. I'm not old, I'm not going to get old, and I don't want to be put away. So therefore, I won't retire. Reasonable response is do it, I must to pay the bills. I, yeah. But there's a confluence here, right? I I had a fantastic conversation, a coaching session yesterday, and we were talking about uh, the the challenge that that we were working through was, you know, what's next? What's the next stage? We've built this business. I'm, I'm ready to move on from this business. What's the next stage? And so we just went through this exploration process of, finding those gifts and talents and finding the people that you like to help and finding the problems that those people have and how can you apply those gifts and talents. There is a confluence there. Now, yes, there is a practical issue that you have to pay the bills, got to keep the lights on, food on the table. You have to do those things. But there's not a, well, this is the practical stuff and this is the stuff I really love to do. There is a place where those two flow together. Right. If you're working in your gift, I mean, this is and this is where we fall down all the time. Right. If you're working in your gifts, leveraging your talents. The work is easy. And when we feel like it's easy, we discount the value. Right. But the value is not value as we define it. Value is always defined by the recipient. Think about that for just a minute. Right. You, when you go to the store and you're shopping between two or three different options for the same type of product, if you shop on price, you know, you choose the least expensive one. That's how you apply and determine value. If you choose the one that works the best, that's more valuable to you, right? You are the recipient. You get to define value when you are creating value for other people. They get to determine the value, and they will always, always value, apply a higher price tag to the value you create than you do. Always. 
as long as you're doing a good job for them. If, I mean, if, if you're actually creating value for them, if you are solving a problem and you are doing something valuable for them, they will always price it higher than you would because we're dismissive of the things that we're able to do. Well, we'll keep looking, Sarah. It's out there somewhere. If you haven't, I mean, Sarah's comments, I haven't found the place where those two flow together yet. That's okay. Lots of people live their whole lives and don't do that. Just don't give up because it is out there. It, there is a reason why you are here with these skills in this time in this place. You just have to find it. That's all. All right. Don't discount your offering just because you think it's easy. Yeah. I mean, we do that. All the time we do that. I am. I mean, I, there, there's a ton of examples here, but but the the general gist of it is, oh, that's easy. Nobody will pay me for that. Or, oh, that was easy. I, you just give me five bucks, right? But the reality is, if, if I do say, if I'm able to do something, let's say that that this um, person I was talking with yesterday. If they were going to go on this year-long journey to find out what's next, and I've shortcutted that journey just by six months, and in that six months, you know, they can do a lot, and you can get a lot done in six months. Is that valuable? I mean, it is. Only they can assign a numeric value to that, right? But, but the conversation, I love having conversations like that it was fantastic and it was um not necessarily easy for me but it was very straightforward it's like here's here's what we need to do so don't don't be dismissive of your own value you're creating on almost guarantee 100 percent of the time you're creating more value than you're capturing don't leave it on the table wow look at the time i'm almost done two whole shows today i if I keep going, I'll have to change the name of the show. That's going to be it for today. What is the thing? Here's your question. What are you craving that you're not pursuing? And then the follow-up question to that is, why not? What are you craving that you're not pursuing? There's a reason why you crave it. The same way your body craves the things that it needs, your mind is craving the result that it needs, leading you to apply your gifts and talents. Today is, uh, what is today? Thursday? It is Thursday. Thankful Thursday. What are you thankful for today? You can drop that down in the comments as well. Tomorrow, Friday. That means, dun, 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 free coaching Friday. If you have a question, comment, or topic that you would like for me, question, concern, or topic that you would like for me uh, to address on the show yesterday, send me a message. Leave it in the comments here. Send me an email, tom at tomrigsby.com. Whatever method works best for you, shoot it over to me. And that'll be the topic of the day tomorrow. I will be back again tomorrow at 7 o'clock. You guys have a terrific Thursday. I'll talk to you tomorrow.